Okay, Steve Randall again. Um, this time I wanted to talk about how to make a ground plane antenna. Um, this I've seen a number of times, um, well, well basically I've seen people turn up without making one, so I'm really just going to explain how to make one um, so you can get everything ready and working before um, flying your Raspberry Pi. Um, you, you get a length of uh, cable like this with the Raspberry Pi stuff. It's probably a bit longer, but I've, I've already shortened this one. So um, I'll just show you with a, a shorter bit of wire. But, but in, in essence, really, you're just bringing the connector from the um, RF output um, out through the, site, through the case to um, a ground plane antenna, which you're going to make on the underside of this box. So you're going to need to, to um, punch a hole through this box to bring the wire through. I, um, it really doesn't matter. It, it's ideally you would bring it out sort of in the middle of the box, but um, in the middle of the face, but, it, but anywhere I actually, actually do. Um, and now what a ground plane antenna is, it's got a, a radiating element and it's got a number of um, ground plane elements which um, act as a, they, they call it a counterpoise to the, uh, to the radiating element. Um, and ideally you would bring those out at, at perhaps a right angle and um, the, the trouble with that is that they stick out from the side of the box uh, and that sometimes catches on the lines that we use for tying the boxes together. So my recommendation would be to instead of bring them straight out the side of the box is actually wrap them around the sides it seems to work quite well um, if you want the ultimate in, in sort of radio performance then you probably stick with them sticking out but if you're not worried about sort of losing a little bit of performance and certainly making something that is um, much more resilient to uh, tangling you know stopping tangling happening um, then you probably want to bring those elements around the side. Anyway, I'll show you how to do that. So, so basically, um, you need a piece of cable which you'll cut um, to, a, to length that would allow you to get the wire out through the bottom of the box and then give you um, 16 and a half uh, centimetres to make the um, radiating element. So what you do is you, you find where that is on the on the cable, you don't have to be particularly accurate at this stage, and you then trim back the cable very gently. You cut through the outer of the outside, but trying not to cut in to the braiding in the middle. Can you get that down? This one's been a bit. Now you're going to need a knife. Okay, so I'm going to just gently cut along the length of that, again trying not to go too deep, you can just feel the breathing inside that, that bit you don't want. So now you've got the braiding and then there's an inner condu conductor with a plastic sheath on it. Um, and so we don't need all of this braiding for this particular job so we're going to chop some of it off without cutting through the inner connector and the inner wire. Right, so we're going to take this wire that we've cut um, the braiding off of, or most of the braiding off of, and we're going to push it through the bottom of this box to make the ground plane. So just need to push a hole about 
somewhere about the centre of the box, but, but allowing for the uh, Raspberry Pi and Pi and Sky board to, to fit inside as well. So I think that should just about do it. Let's make a bigger hole. So that, that's now fitting through. So um, the first job is to pull back the braiding so that it um, is on the outer of the of the coax. Like that. Just sort of like push it back. Okay. Now I've got some um, tin copper wire here. Uh, this is actually old telephone wire and I'm just going to strip the, the copper wire out of that by pulling off the insulation. It's pretty easy to do with your fingers so you don't even need cutters for this. Um, each of these pieces is around about 40 um, centimetres long um, and the reason for that we be clear in a minute. So just pull those off and then you need, need to find the middle of each piece and then we're going to wind those onto this outer braiding and then um, just do that nice and tight to ensure that they, that doesn't come off. Uh, the whole lot will be taped in place anyway so it shouldn't come off during flight. So run that over the top of the, uh, the top of the cable. So I'm going to take this take this cable and um, hook over it this tin copper wire in such a way that we can to the braiding so that, that you know there's an electrical connection between the tin copper wire and the braiding. So you can really pull this tight when you do this because it's it's really only this that is giving you the electrical connection if you haven't got any soldering. But you can do it reasonably tight and uh, the plastic underneath gives a bit of a bit of spring. So that's the first one. You can probably hear just flip up the the braid what's left of the braiding underneath that and then the next piece of wire you can run over over both of them. pretty much it. So just neaten it up a bit and to be honest that although that doesn't look particularly electrically good it, it's going to be good enough for the, for the flight as, as long as it doesn't get too much stress. So those are your four radials and this is your radiating element. Now that has got to be, well, ideally it should be, 16.4 uh, uh, centimetres long. Um, and that's really measuring it from where, where it exits the, the, co the copper outer braiding there. So 16.4, try and measure that reasonably accurately, but in the way doesn't seem to make a lot of difference. Clip that off at 16.4. Okay, so that's going to fo form your radiating element and these are going to be the ground plane elements, um, your, your counterpoise. So um, each of those again is probably going to need to be well, it's got to be, they've got to be 16.4 or longer, really. So we go for around about uh, 17, say. I'm going to chop each one of these off at um, 17 centimetres or thereabouts. Okay, that's 
all four done. Right, well, well. now I'm going to, well, there's, let's say there's two ways to do this now. You can either put some straws on here to just give it, give them the, the elements a bit of a, a bit of um, strengthening, really, a bit of, um, and those will be taped onto the case, but then they'll stick out that amount. Um, or we can wrap the wires around the, the case itself. So um, I'm going to opt for the latter. Um, so first thing to do is to like push this back in. And really the simplest thing is to just tape those into the, in towards the corners of the box. I mean, ideally the box would probably be, be square, but um, this is rectangular, doesn't really matter. And we'll just tape those temporarily in place. A bit of duct tape. So that is more or less completed antenna. As I say, I tend to just bend these up and then take those to the side of the box as well. And like that. And then we'll just So, oh, one more or less completed ground pane antenna. And in, in operation, that is pointing down. That, that element is pointing down. The reason for that is that the radiation pattern from these tends to, to far out sideways, not particularly down, but, but sideways. So a long, long distance away, you're getting a good view of the antenna, which is sort of like sending its power out in this, in this direction. So um, an upside down um, ground plane is really what it is. It's an inverted ground plane. Um, and it seems pretty ideal for high altitude ballooning in the UK anyway, or in, and in Europe where we, we tend to use 434 megahertz um, uh, uh, UK HAS system for, um, for transmitting. So, I mean, the other thing you can do is just have add a bit of tape here to hold hold that down and make sure that this doesn't move, because um, the last thing you want is uh, for this to be ripped out in flight. Y y you should be aware that when the balloon bursts, you can get um, some things tangled up um, uh, during the descent, and uh, it's uh, it's quite possible some of this stuff can be physically stressed. So it's probably a good idea to make sure it's well taped down so that it doesn't um, get tangled up and, and pulled. So that's it, more or less uh, completed ground plane antenna. And that will do you for um, a good, uh, good signal from half to balloon.